Shalom, shalom, Israel. So I want to come up here and make this quick video. Um, I have been traveling the last few days. I've been out of state visiting family. Um, and I literally just got back in um, my home this morning around 4 o'clock this morning. So anyway, um, while I was gone, I did bring my word, of course, and I was reading over it. And I've been reading through Ezekiel currently, and I'm working my way with Ezra as well. Uh, I've been Since the last past year, I've been working to go from reading the Bible from front to back cover to cover because i have a new understanding now before i had never understood that um i didn't never I, ne I never understood the uh the, the so-called old testament i didn't it didn't make sense to me i didn't understand it because like i said i came into this thinking that israelites were a group of people that you know existed back in the day during the bible days and you know they just kind of died off and nothing ever really happened to them i you know nothing really came of them actually i never really you know it was just these people that was great and raved and and, and renowned back during that time frame and boy was I ignorant because I realized that I thought of everybody else on the planet as having descendants but never looked at Israelites as having descendants but anyway so now that I have that understanding now the most high has opened my eyes I have gone back and I'm reading through it and I'm not just reading through the Canaanized KJV Bible I'm also reading through the Apocrypha and um, I have some other books I'm working on but I'm bouncing back and forth between the two um, and you know between the ones that I'm reading Anyway, this video I want to talk about specifically to the unrepentant of Israel and also to Israel as, as well. I always, always, always talk to Israel. Um, you know, I'm not um, ignorant to the fact that strangers and Gentiles can join in and so forth. But when I speak, I only speak to my people because the house, the head has to get it first. What good is it that, you know, what are the Gentiles going to do if we... Um, if we don't have the home and the head in order, you know what I mean? So the Gentiles can follow pursuit with what the Israelites, the head is doing. Um, so I only specifically speak to, um, you know, my message can be heard to, and taken to whomever wants to have a heart to please the most high, live for the most high, but my heart, from, but my heart, my message is coming from, I mean, coming, yeah, coming from me to my brother, like my Israelite, Israelite brothers and sisters. I apologize if I'm stuttering and whatever. I'm just trying to get this video down uh, while it's on my mind now. I wanted to do it while I was away, but I didn't have the time, of course. So, um, anyway, I was reading through this and Ezekiel chapter 33 speaks about, um, the wickedness and the wicked man and the righteous man, and then the watchman on the wall and how the watchman is supposed to sound the alarm. And if the watchman does not sound the alarm, the people that are not, that are, are in range of the alarm, if they don't, if, if the watchman doesn't hear that, whatever comes uh, upon them, the watchman is guilty. Their blood is upon their hand, his hand rather. And if the watchman does sound the alarm and the people does not prepare themselves against, you know, what's coming to them, then uh, the, the blood is on their own hands. And so this specifically talks about the wicked man and it talks, I encourage you to read it yourself, but it talks about the wicked man being um, re uh, repented turning from his wicked ways and if he turns from his wicked, wicked ways and walks in righteousness the rest of the days of his life on earth before the most high then his wickedness will be forgotten uh, i believe it's in psalms it talks about casting your sin, your sins into the sea of forgetfulness anyway it also talks about the righteous man that the righteous man cannot be caught up in his own righteousness and can't be caught up in his own uh well i've done good deeds type of thing because if you if you transgress the most high and you begin to sin then your righteousness is null and void and I want to talk about that. Let me point to chapter 33, verse 12. It says here, Therefore thou, son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for the righteousness, for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. Verse 13, when I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts in his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. So the point is, is that even those who are professing Yahweh um, or Yahuwah, whichever pronunciation you use, um, you know, we have to make sure that our hearts are right before the Most High. And I realize I witness a lot of times in the Israelite, especially black Americans, um, the Israelites in America, um, I feel like there's a lot of us that tend to love the culture. We love looking the part. We love having something to claim as an identity and a role. And I get it because growing up in black in America as a black person, you have no clue. You know, you grow up around Gentiles and heathens for real. You don't have any clue. They don't teach you nothing about yourselves. And and those who you know who do know, they don't really take most of. The, I'll put it like this: most of the one, most of them do not take the time to actually let you know about who you are. I've never encountered a Gentile who have actually sought to, um, you know, really 
push to help me understand who I am and where I came from. I've never. Now, I understand there are people that have that have that have had that experience, and that's great and that's wonderful. But I've never encountered that. Um, I've my life has been specifically you walk up and you know you grow up and you're blind to everything you when it comes down to black history it's rosa parks martin luther king and malcolm x and i'm not disregarding them what they've done but it starts and stops there and it's slavery of course that's it and i'm like i always had an inclination like there had to be more i just didn't know where to begin so the most high led me into this but a lot of times our people we because of those those things that we had to deal with in america and in the, the ignorance that we had to grow up around and being ignorant things we were ignorant of it, do, it does have a sense of pride that we come that you know, that comes with um you know understanding who we are and walking up right before the most high but the one thing i want to point out is that the difference for me and i think the difference need to be in general and we have to make sure that we're not that we that we're careful careful to do this is that we love the most high first we can't love the law and then that causes us to love the most high that's backwards we're supposed to love the most high and that causes us to love the law and if we love the most high then of course everything that about everything that's about him will begin to take on his character we begin to do the things that are pleasing to him naturally you know and i think that's why a lot of times our people some people still struggle with certain things because we we grasp onto the law we grasp onto the culture and we love that but we never really actually got a good foundation and grip on the most high and that should be our first thing that matthew 6 and 33 says seek, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness so yes do be, be seek to be pleasing to the most high and do all that he called you to do that you know is right before him but at the same time, we have to we have to make sure that we dig into knowing him and not just knowing the culture and the histories and so forth. Um, and so I want to speak to that. You know, whomever may hear my voice, I want to serve as the watchman, you know, so to speak. I want I want to sound my alarm because I don't want my all this that I'm doing to be in vain because the purpose of me doing this is to speak to um, Israel, you know, and I, I, I'm not saying that Gentiles and, and, and strangers can't sojourn, sojourn or whatever, can't join in. They can, they can come in. Yes, they can. Romans 11 chapter talks about that. And throughout the Bible it mentions that as well. But my heart, when I'm speaking, my voice is specifically from my heart going to my Israelite brothers and sisters, because how can the Gentile, how can those who are not of a true branch know what to do or have a, have a branch to join into if the head branch, if the main branch, the true branch, the original branch is not in place, the head has to be in place. So my voice, you know, anybody can hear my words and take it and apply it. If they have a love for the most high and want to serve him. But my voice, my words specifically go out to my brothers and my sisters who are Israelites, because we have to make sure that we get our house in order to be able to welcome in the stranger and those who are, still scattered and those who are still unrepentant of Israel. Um, but to the wicked man, repent, you know, if you're walking up right, if you're not walking up right before the most high, repent. Now is the time we cannot put our trust and our faith in this world, this world, this society, especially in America is falling rapidly. It is deteriorating rapidly, rapidly. The things that, the, that they, that, that, that the people here have put their whole faith and trust upon and put and built as their foundation has been proven to be stilts and it is shaking and it's falling. There's so many people dying. There's so many people that are tormented. There's so many people who are full of demons and plagued with tormentations every day. There's no faith there's no there's no hope there's no peace in the world we should not be looking to the world for anything we should not love the world at all the scripture says to be in the world but not of the world we have to se separate the two we have to set apart our lives from the world we cannot love it we have to repent we have to turn away from our wicked ways even the righteous you know we cannot get caught up in our righteousness we cannot think that our saving grace is found in us keeping the shabbat and not eating pork and wearing our fringes we are to Excuse me, we are to do that. Yes, of course. But that's not, you know, that's not the saving grace alone. We have to have our foundation in the Most High and the work that the Messiah did when he came on earth, clothed in flesh. The word was made flesh. The word dwelt among us. The word walked among us. Not me, you know, us per se, you know, but a man among man, humans. Um we have to believe in that. We have to not be ashamed to continue on going forward. Those who are pushing the message of Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh Shai, Yahushua, uh, you know, the message of the, of, of the gospel, of the God of Israel, of the Elohim, Elohim of Israel. We cannot be ashamed of that. We should not look to the world and be uh, thinking, you know, we should, we want to be like them. Remember, that was the cause of the fall of Israel. Read Romans chapter 11. The riches of the Gentiles. We love the riches of the Gentiles. We wanted the riches of the Gentiles. We wanted to be like the Gentiles. And that's what caused us to fall. 
fall aside and miss the mark. And that's why we have to be regrafted back in. But we cannot be ashamed. I could I could not care less about who may have known me in my life before I was a Christian, when I was a Christian or before that. I don't care who may look at me and say, oh, she's different now. She's religious, whatever you want to call me. I don't care because I love the most high and my heart. I found the truth and my heart is dedicated to doing what he says. I want to be set apart. I want to be different. I don't want to be like anyone else. I don't want to be like the world. So I want to sound my alarm and I want to sound my voice. Whomever may hear me, great, large, it doesn't matter in number. Whomever may hear it, you know, repent. If the most high is tugging at your heart, if Yahweh is calling you to live a set apart life, to come out of paganism, come out of Sunday worship, come out of eating pork, come out of making excuses for doing what you want to do, eating what you want to eat, doing what you want to do. Come out of that foolishness because that will not save you in the day of trouble. It doesn't matter if you went to church every Sunday in your life. If you did not keep what the Most High said to do in this book, your righteousness will not save you. You read it for yourself, Ezekiel 13. I mean, excuse me, Ezekiel 33 verses 12 and 13. And I encourage you to read the whole chapter. Also read chapter 34 because it talks about um, the righteousness and the good things that's going to happen to Israel once the Most High uh, um, puts us back into our land. In rightful standing. Um, so I want to sound the alarm. Whomever may hear my voice, Israelite or non-Israelite, whomever the most high may be tugging at, you know, walk upright, shake off the things of the world. Uh, prepare yourself when you hear the alarm. It's not just me. There's other people out here sounding alarm. Prepare yourself when you hear the alarm, um, when you hear it going off, that the blood may not be upon your hands um, if you don't prepare yourself. Um, to the righteous, like I said, keep going. Don't get uh, wearing well-doing. Do not get caught up in what you have done and how you keeping yourself and how you look in and playing the part. Because you can turn away and transgress one moment and your righteousness will be null and void and you will be all that will be remembered is your wickedness. So repent Israel, repent Israel, repent Israel. The righteous continue on going. Keep your eyes on the most high. Focus